Today, I will uh, show you the effect of uh, resonances in rooms. So as you have understood, reverberation and resonance are two different concepts. And here we will specifically focus on the resonances. So we are standing in a reverberation chamber, which is devoted to reverberation, mostly. This is a 200 cubic meter room with uh, ceramic walls, reflecting walls, very hard reflecting walls. Uh, and the resonances are mainly due to the occurrence of standing waves between two rigid boundaries, for instance. So here in this room, we will experience the room resonances, which occur at very low frequency. When I speak of very low frequency, it's almost around the threshold of audition, so around 20 hertz. The first one will occur at 20 hertz. Uh, so it will be barely audible for you with the headphones, but I will try to uh, highlight those effects with a microphone, a measurement microphone that is just here, is that you can see the waveform on the uh, top left part of the screen, which is basically the sound pressure time variation measured at this microphone position expressed in Pascal as a function of time. So you can see the actual pressure amplitude at this position in time with a time window that is quite uh, short, a few tens of milliseconds uh, frame. So actually, I have set a sound in this room, a very low frequency sound at 20.6 hertz, which is actually playing, so you can't hear it with a microphone and with the loudspeaker, with the, the headphones, and you can't barely see it also at this position with the microphone. If you look at the waveform, it's almost flat, except the fact that I'm speaking. So if I'm staying quiet, silent. We don't see much change in the waveform. So the waveform doesn't seem to, to be moving. So I'm playing this 20 hertz sound with a very low amplitude with a loudspeaker that is just bottom of the camera, so you don't see it, but it's just one meter below on the ground. So it's a subwoofer, a loudspeaker, with an amplifier, and it's fed by a signal generator that provides a 20.6 hertz. Now, we don't hear anything here, and I can't hear anything, even me with my ear. What happens if I'm moving from this position this position toward this space. Ah, we begin to see something. We begin to see a waveform with quite significant amplitude in the range of 50 500 sorry, millipascal, so half a pascal, which gives a root mean square value of 300 something millipascal is one third of the Pascal. So we have a sound pressure level of 84 dB, more or less. And you see that you see the, the waveform, so the 20.6 Hertz waveform that is quite visible. And if I move along the surface, it doesn't change much. Okay. And when I'm coming back to the position here, I have almost silence here. So very high amplitude of pressure at this space, almost zero here. What about this space? Let's go. Once again, we have high sound pressure amplitude, almost the same as the other face all along this space. This is the manifestation of a room mode. The first room resonance, the room resonance frequency, 
occurs for wavelengths that is twice the longest dimension of the room. It's here the length, which is in the range of seven meters. So if I multiply seven meter by two, I have 14 meter. And if you divide C, the celerity of sound by 14 meter, you get something around 20 hertz. So 20 hertz is the first resonant frequency of this room. I have wave coming from this loudspeaker that are traveling in this direction, reflected hard reflection the other way. And when you have phase uh, match between the sound pressure in this direction and this pressure in this direction, then you accumulate the sound pressure and you have twice the sound pressure. So at this specific frequency, the pressure is maximum on the two opposite faces and almost null in the middle. So you have a maximum pressure, a null here, and a maximal amplitude, but a minimal phase opposition with this phase here. So you have half a wavelength with a zero here, which is called a node. So this is a nodal surface here. And those two faces are the antinodal surfaces, the antinodes. So that's the result for this dimension. But hopefully there is not one single room remains and we'll just show it now. By the way, you don't hear it. The 20 hertz, even though I can't hear, I can hear it with my ears here, with 84 dB. Uh, it's difficult to render with headphones and probably this microphone has not much sensitivity at 20 hertz. So probably a combination of this microphone plus your headphone make this sound barely audible. Let's try with a second room. Now, I have chosen to play a new sound to this loudspeaker with the same amplitude. I didn't change the excitation of uh, the loudspeaker, so the same voltage. But now I've moved to 26.9 hertz. Why 26.9 hertz? Because it corresponds to a wavelength that is twice the width of the room. We have a room of six meter width, more or less, to have 13 meter for the wavelength, so twice the width of the, the dimension of the room. And the corresponding frequency is 26.9 hertz. So what will happen? As in this direction, we have antinodes on the two surface and one node in the middle of the room. So let's try it. So zero here. So this is an antinode. And on the opposite side, the same. So 26.9 hertz corresponds to the second mode, second room resonant frequency of this room. I think you can't hear it neither. It's too low frequency, and maybe also the amplitude is a bit too low. Even it's, if it's a bit higher than 20 hertz, it's still barely audible. So let's try a third one. Let's try the third mode in the room, which is at 34.9 hertz. Now I switch the loudspeaker to 34 dot nine hertz, which corresponds to the third mode, which is an hybrid mode. It's not only in the X or the Y direction or the Z direction, but it's a combination of the X and the Y. So it corresponds to a combination of two directions. So it's a transversal mode, called the transversal mode. And this time, the antinode should be at the four corners of the room. And there are two nodal surface, which are one in the middle of the room this way and the other on the middle of the room this way. So let's 
move the microphone once again. Same demonstration. I'm starting from almost the node. I'm still around the node. I should be at the node somehow. Yeah, something very important. And then, ooh, ooh, then it's quite loud. I think you should hear the sound even with your headphone. With an amplitude that exceeds three pascals. So you have something in the range of 104 pascals. Oh, dB, sorry. Back in the back corner. Let's try this one. It's even louder here. And last but not least, at your position. And even behind. And to be frank, it's quite, quite loud. I've I feel the pain in my ear. So it's a quite heavy, loud sound. So you can see that room modes occur in the low frequency, and this is not the only resonances that we have. We have an infinity of them, up to a point where they are so close together in frequency that they form a kind of continuum. So in this first lecture, we will concentrate on the low frequency part of the room, so below what we call the Schroeder frequency where the room behave as a resonator, so like a combination of modes, the room modes, and where, how you can interpret those uh, modes, how you can simulate them, and lately, not today, but at the end of the semester, propose you some hints on how to tackle those low frequency modes, which are very difficult to tackle with the techniques of the state of the art.